Howdy and welcome to part 5 of my Bevy intro series, where we're making a tower defense game. Last time we got basic user input and click detection, so we can select towers and press space to build them. Now we want to add some UI so the user can select which tower to build in each spot. For this video we'll use the built-in Bevy UI systems, which are currently a bit bare-boned in my opinion, but it's a good place to start before branching out into the world of community UI plugins. As some quick plugin suggestions, I do like Kayak UI, which seems to be getting major updates, and Bevy EGUI, which is great for simple developer tools. To get started, let's just create a basic UI layout with three buttons. First, let's look at the Bevy docs for the UI module. Here, most of what we want is in the entity module. These four bundles are basically the entirety of UI in Bevy right now. We have a button, an image, a generic node, and text. Let's look at the node bundle because that's the base of all the other bundles. Here we have node, which is just the size of the UI element, style, which is a big one that we'll have to come back to, a color, an image, a focus policy that decides if the node will let things like mouse clicks pass through to the elements behind this one, and finally the transforms and visibilities. So most of these are pretty simple and Bevy will handle them, but the big one for us is the style. If you're working with Bevy's UI, I highly recommend keeping this documentation open and opening the Flexbox reference they link. Bevy uses a Flexbox system and this style strut determines everything about how an element is positioned and how its children are laid out. I'm not going to cover each thing point by point here, but we'll use it for our simple example today. Okay, that's enough theory, so let's actually make some buttons. First, let's create a system to run on startup called Create UI. This will be a nice temporary place to learn. Here, all we need is commands to spawn our UI entities. Now the first thing we want is a node bundle to be our root, and I'm going to set it to be the full size of the screen and to center its content. For whatever reason, the default color of nodes is white, so when we run the game now, we see the entire screen becomes white. We can work around this by setting the color to none, which will make it transparent like we want. Being able to set UI color is a great way to debug your UI setup though, and I highly recommend playing around with nested nodes of different colors when trying to learn these systems. For example, if I set the color here to green, I can then use the inspector we set up earlier to change the style live in the game. This is by far the best way I've found to set up UI in Bevy. I create the hierarchy I want, twiddle with all the settings in game, and then write them down and set them in my text editor. I'm going to make an empty marker component for the root node so we can find it and despawn it later, and I'll add that to the new entity. It's also worth pointing out that if we add multiple root nodes to the game, if you will lay them out in a flexbox style. They don't overlap each other like you might expect, so I recommend keeping your entire UI under a single root. Now we can add children to the root to be our buttons. I'm going to add one button for each tower type, and for the styling, I'm going to set the size to be 15% of the screen height, and the width will be based on our resolution. If you want more flexibility, there is the image bundle, which can keep the aspect ratio of the images, and then you can have the buttons be children of that, but I don't want to get that nested for this example. I also want to align self to flex start, which will put our buttons at the bottom of the screen, and I want a 2% margin just to keep everything nice and spaced out. Of course, you can experiment with this in the inspector to get something you like. Lastly, we need to differentiate the buttons, so let's create a tower type enum and make it a component. Then, we'll create an array of tower types and add those as components to our button. I also want to have images for our buttons, so let's add the asset server to our system. Then we can load in three images for our button icons and set the image field on our buttons to these handles. If you want to make this a bit more automatic for adding new tower types, I'd recommend using the strum crate which gives you the tools to make enums iterable, and I use it often in my projects. As a quick aside, to make these UI images, I use the Stable Diffusion tool, which I'll link in the description. We've talked about it a bit on my Discord, and it's really nice to give it a prompt like Tomato Tower, and then pick my favorite image from what it generates. It even has the Image to Image tool, which lets me evolve my favorite image until I get one that's perfect for what I need. I've also used it to create some textures for our targets, just to show off that Bevy can handle things like UV map textures. Now to end this section of the video, let's create a system to get what button is clicked and print out its tower type. Here we want a query for the interaction component added by the button bundle, and the tower type. We can also use a new type of filter for our query, which is the change filter. This will still call the system every frame, but the contents of the query will only be the interactions that have changed in the past frame 
which can be useful in some situations to squeeze out a bit more performance. All I want to do here is to check if the interaction is clicked, and then I'll print out a log message saying that we want to spawn our tower. Now when we run the game we see our nice buttons, and when we click on them we see it, the button says what we tried to spawn. Now we need to actually integrate this with the core gameplay. First, we want to change our tower spawning function to support our new tower type enum. I'm going to implement two functions for this enum. The first will take the enum and the game assets and return back the model for the tower and the tower component that will specify its behavior. Then I'll just match over the enum and return the correct asset and some different values for the tower shooting time. I'm also going to create a get bullet function, which will do the same thing but give back the bullet model and the bullet component. Now, up in tower shooting, I can add the tower type to the query, get it in our loop, and then call get bullet on it when we're ready to spawn a bullet. And each tower can spawn their own bullet models with their own speeds. Now back in spawn tower, I'm going to do the same thing to spawn the correct tower model and give it the correct parameters. Now instead of spawning when we press spacebar, we want to spawn when the button was clicked. So just like before, we check the interaction to see if it was clicked, then we see which tower was selected, despawn its base, and call spawn tower. Next up, we need to only create the UI if the tower is selected. So let's move create UI from a system to a function we can call. Usually, I change the parameters like this, where commands are immutable borrow, and resources are now also borrows. And that indicates to me that this isn't a bevy system, but is instead something I'll call from a bevy system. Now we can create a new bevy system called create UI and selection. Here we need commands in the asset server to call our create UI function. We also need a query for all of the selections, which is managed by the bevy mod picking plugin we added last time, and a query for the entity with our root node marker so we can despawn it. Now let's see if any selection is selected using the fancy functional way of using Rust iterators and bevy queries. This also could just be a for loop with a sentinel value if you're still not up for the functional style. Then we want to match over the root query dot get single. Remember last time we used just single if we knew and enforced that there'd be only one of a given query match. And if there was ever zero or more than one it would panic. Here, get single returns as a result, so we can handle the cases ourselves. If the result returns okay, then there's already a root. So if nothing is selected anymore, then we want to despawn our buttons. If it returns an error with no entities, then there's currently no root UI. So if a tower base is selected, then we need to spawn the UI. Finally, if it returns an error that there's more than one match, then we have done something very wrong and we can mark this as unreachable. This function is the only place where we'll despawn and spawn the UI, so it should be pretty auditable if things go wrong. Now if we remember to add all of our new systems to the tower plugin and play the game, we can see that we have the ability to create any tower when we click a base. I've went ahead and created more tower bases just so we can see all the different types, and I've made new models and added them to our game assets resource. I think that's all we have time for in this episode. I wanted to get a start menu in, but I think we need to save that for a polishing video. I hope this introduction to Bevy UI was thorough enough for you to start experimenting and apply it to your own games. In my experience, it's very trial and error heavy, so I'd recommend just playing around with the inspector and checking the reference page until you start to get a handle on it. Bevy 0.9 should be releasing soon, and this time I plan on updating all of the branches of the Git repo to the most recent version of Bevy. I'll also probably show how to do the migration as part of the tutorial series, because updating versions is a core part of the Bevy experience. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. It really means the world to me and I can't say how great it is to have so much support. There's a link to join the Discord in the description, and please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.